Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News, Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. Stand up for your country. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot. My feelings toward President Biden have hardened over the last year, and I really don't like him. Um, I don't know him that well as a person. I've run into a couple of times, and he was fine. But what he's doing to the country, um, to me, is now reach critical mass. And I was trying to pinpoint in my own mind what annoys me about him so much. Because I've been doing this now for a while. And I know who the presidents are and what they espouse. And I disagree with a lot of it. But I haven't been this down on a president ever. Ever. Now, when I came in and interviewed Jimmy Carter, and it was a long time ago, and I was a hard news reporter then, not an analyst. But Biden to me now has reached a point in my mind where he's doing active harm every day to all of us, all Americans. And that is a subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. The bottom, I hate the cliche bottom line, but when I strip it all away, I believe, and I could be wrong, that Joe Biden does not care about solving any problems. He's there. He likes the perks. Certainly his wife does. They like the leisurely uh, schedule he has. They like the extravagant surroundings. They like all that. But does Biden really want to solve problems and make things better? He does not. Because it, he's not even trying. So it's like you were a football coach and you had one of your top players just say, ah, I'm not even going to try. You wouldn't like that very much. And that's where I am. So let me back it up, okay? I'm an acquaintance who uh, earlier in this October, his daughter died from fentanyl. Mid-20s, three-year-old daughter his granddaughter. Now he has custody of the granddaughter. So imagine I have a daughter around that age. If she goes out on fentanyl, I mean, I don't know how you recover from that. So we all know that there is a record amount of narcotics coming across the open border. I mean, I'll just give you one stat because you already know this, and it's not two sides to the story. So according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, fentanyl seizures have increased more than 800 percent under Biden. It's poison that's coming in. Now, has the federal government done anything to stop that? No. Nothing. No extra people on the border, no border fence, nothing. They Federal government continues to allow millions of people to come into the United States and request asylum. What this does is the border protection people have to adjudicate them. They have to take them in, process them, give them their cell phone free, their travel voucher, whatever it may be. This takes away from interdicting narcotics. That's why there's a record number of narcotics flowing in. The cartels know this. The drug Mexican cartels, they know this. So they flood the zone with human beings knowing that the border protection people are overwhelmed. Now, Biden doesn't care. If he did, all he has to do is sign an executive order today that says the United States is not going to process any more asylum claims for a year until we can sort this out. You can do that, as Barack Obama once said, stroke of a pen. And Obama was tough on the border. Under Obama, there were more migrants deported than any other president in history. Did you know that? So Biden doesn't care. He does, he's not going to stop it. And you can assign a reason, any reason you want. Okay. The far left wants an open border. This is the George Soros crew. And they're the main source of revenue for the Democratic Party now and Biden. But he's not going to go up against that. That's what I believe is happening. But even apart from that, 
Does Biden care about this, even though his son is a drug addict? All right, Hunter Biden, the drug addict. Biden is strangely detached from this. I'm not. So when I heard my acquaintance tell me what happened to his daughter, I, I mean, you sit there and go, is this America? Where fentanyl dealers aren't even held on bail? Let's let them out. Where anybody can come across the border? Where cartels make billions of dollars smuggling narcotics into the United States? They laugh at us. They laugh at us. Because we're so weak. And this is Joe Biden. Okay, how about spending, government spending? So I asked my staff, which again is very good research staff, really good. Um, look, has Joe, as the Democrats, have Biden, Congress cut anything, any spending at all in three years? Not a penny. Joe Biden is the biggest spending president in our history. In our history. Um, I'll just give it one stat. I'm going to keep it simple here. In eight years, Barack Obama's second biggest spender, $8.3 trillion added to the national debt in eight years. Under Biden, three years, $6 trillion and more. Every day he comes in and wants to give more money. Let me just give you a, another stat. So you hear a little about windmill energy, right? Wind energy. So the government is in under Biden for about a billion and a half in funds for the wind technology. That's a lot of money. Only two wind projects are operational that give any substantial energy to anybody. Two. Where I live on Long Island, they built a ton of windmills out in the Atlantic. Most of them don't work. All right. So you pour in money into this green stuff, massive amount of money. It's not going to work. This wind stuff is not going to work. The government waste of our tax dollars is astronomical. Biden care? No, he does not. And there's a proposal now to send billion dollars plus to Israel but to pay for it, to cut back the expansion of IRS agents, 87,000 of them. That seems like a reasonable trade in the short term, does it not? Biden goes, no, non-starter. Now, Biden doesn't know, but doesn't care what this massive spending will lead to. He doesn't know. He's not smart enough to know. But he'll be dead by the time it kicks in. All right? And I don't say that with any malice. He's, he's, Man's 80 years old, and the U.S. dollar is not going to collapse overnight, but it will collapse. You can't sustain a $35 trillion debt and rising. You can't. All right? The government's going to run out of money. Already, it's having trouble selling bonds to overseas investors already. And the, and the rate now is above 5%. They have to keep increasing the rate to get people to buy them by the paper. So this is macroeconomics, and Biden has no clue about this at all. And his eyes would glaze over, he'd probably take a nap. But he doesn't care. So narcotics, migrants, and there's another caravan, by the way, coming. I think we have some pictures of that. On the radio, I'll just describe it. More than 7,000 people marching up through Mexico. Press is there. And they're going to come across the border. Who's going to stop them? Nobody. Nobody going to stop them. Here they come. Biden care? No. So when you reach that point where you have a president of the United States that simply does not care about solving problems, then you're in a desperate situation. Now, this has happened two other times in our history for you, because you know I combine journalism and history. The first time was a series of presidents before Abraham Lincoln. The worst being James Buchanan. The South had decided very early on, about 10 years before the Civil War began, it had had it. Didn't want to be part of the Union any longer. The movement was led by 
a guy named John C. Calhoun of South Carolina. So it little by little defied the federal government. And Buchanan, four years, did nothing. Everybody knew the end game was South is going to say, we don't want to be part of the United States anymore. We're going to set up our own country. Buchanan had to know it. He did not one thing to stop it, even though there was violence against federal inspectors, federal post office people, military depots. Buchanan sat there. He did not care. And after he left, he blamed it all on Congress, just like the Biden administration is blaming the border on, Christ, on Congress. Exactly the same thing. When you hear Jean-Pierre and all these people, oh, it's Congress won't pass immigration laws. Congress, yeah, Con Mayorkas, Congress, Congress, Congress. That's what Buchanan did. Hey, Congress, I, I don't blame me. And Lincoln walks in and there's a civil war. Okay, the second man was Herbert Hoover, 1929. All right. So the economy collapses, a third of the American workforce loses their jobs. Many people lost their entire fortunes because 50% of the, of the banks closed and there was no insurance. You just lost your money. All right. And Hoover sat there and did nothing. He went, ah, we're not going to help because you got to be self-reliant. And, you know, Hoover Vills, people lining up for food, living outside. Where's Herbert? He's living large. Herbert was living real large in a White House. And then after they booted him out and FDR came in, he lived at the Waldorf Astoria in New York, Herbert Hoover. What a guy, huh? Neither Hoover nor Buchanan cared at all about the American people and what was going on. Biden's in that category. Biden's worse than Hoover. He's not as bad as Buchanan. All right, that's a memo. Debt. You go to bed and wake up thinking about it. Here is the truth. The system traps you in debt. High interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay it off. And insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. Done with debt is your lifeline. Done with debt has a new strategy to help you erase debt faster and easier than you thought. It analyzes all the debt options you qualify for. They know how to reduce bills and cut interest rates. Their skilled staff of negotiators know how to get your debt out of your life without bankruptcy and without a loan. Done with debt are the experts in brilliant strategies for eliminating debt. Here's how easy they make it. Go to donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. All right, let's go to the mail. Kathleen, concierge member. Now, concierge membership, we have gift cards, and we are helping today, just today, about a half dozen people in serious trouble. Okay, and remember, this is all confidential. Okay, no names have ever been given out, nothing like that. But I've got my producer. We have a separate producer on uh, the concierge membership. So we've got about a half dozen. But I think we're going to be able to work out at least four out of the six. Um, but if you get into trouble, this is an insurance policy, this concierge membership. Anyway, Kathleen says, uh, Christopher Ray is a traitor. He may have been a different person when climbing the ladder, but he has crossed the line in his current capacity as FBI chief. It appears he does not want to lose his lucrative job, so he looks the other way on the Biden case. And it's true, he does. No FBI involvement on any of this. Albert, concierge member. Thank you, Albert. Uh, the best person for president is Ron DeSantis. He's a winner, great leadership abilities, not afraid to step on toes, tough negotiator. He might not be the best in the media, but he would be the best candidate. Okay. He's not doing well. You know, everybody knows that. And it's more about his presentation than what he did in Florida, in my opinion. We have a message of the day that runs down the Republican uh, hopefuls and where they are right now on BillOReilly.com. Lois. Um, the Babylon B said the most popular move in Mike Pence's campaign was ending it. That's kind of mean. How can Pence now support Trump after taking such a hard stance against him? One name, Ted Cruz. Remember how Trump attacked Cruz in the primaries four years, uh, eight years ago. God, it seems like four years ago. Um, and Cruz turned out as politics. 
supported Trump. Matthew Presler, Bismarck, North Dakota. Bill, you said you're Halloween on Halloween. Justice Department's most corrupt you've ever seen. J. Edgar Hoover built it, and he was corrupt and sinister. Excellent letter, Matthew. Here is the difference. So if you read Killing the Mob, we go through Herbert, uh, Herbert Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover's corruption. And he was unbelievably corrupt. Broke laws, amassed power, blackmail, you name it. He did it. But he didn't tilt the agency in a political Democrat-Republican way. That's what the FBI has done the last 10 years, influencing the actual elections of this country. So who would you say would be worse? Comey, Ray, or Jay Hoover? Excellent letter, though. Kathy Hauser, Bluntville, Tennessee. I hate that innocent Palestinians are being injured and killed every day. Unfortunately, that is war. Citizens were killed at Yorktown. I read Killing England. And now I know how citizens were treated in that war. Killing England, excellent, Bill. You, you read witches in England right in a row. You know everything about the founding of your country. But anyway, let's go back to the Palestinians. Uh, are they victims? They overwhelmingly support Hamas. Overwhelmingly. They have an alternative, the Palestinian Authority, which is much more moderate. No, they want Hamas. You want Hamas what you get. Now, I am not for harming innocent civilians, but I do know what happened to the Japanese people and the German people in World War II. Sue Mazur, uh, where is Sue from? Uh, Sue, I don't think you put your town in here, but I'm going to use your letter anyway, but I want towns here if you can, please. Hey, Bill, I love the fact you're a fan of the old horror movies. Last night, Halloween, I watched Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> I do love those horror movies. They are so funny. Um, and if you watch them, you see the same extras. So the people running up to burn the castle are the same people that they use in other scenes. So they, they, they have like 20 extras, and they're all in different situations. They just change their clothes. It's really funny. Uh, Gloria Mano, Tom's River, New Jersey. I visited my cousins in North Carolina. I asked them if they watched the No Spin News. They said they'd like to. Well, they should know about it, but I know a lot of people don't. Well, we played it for them, and now I'm buying them a membership, uh, BillOReilly.com membership for Christmas. That is the key. Again, we have these gift cards, all right, for premium and concierge membership. What a fabulous gift if you really care about somebody. And with the presidential election coming up, you know you're not going to get the truth. You know it. I will tell you the truth. All right? The Democrats are winning. I'll tell you they're winning. And why? All right? The Republicans, the same thing. And you're not going to get the truth on the other channels. You won't. So please consider that. It's a very, very good gift. And if you buy the gift cards, giveaway membership, you get a free copy of Killing the Witches or any of the other killing books. All right? What a deal. Stephanie Shepard, Little Falls, New York. I want to express my appreciation for Killing the Witches. I've heard many accounts of Salem's horror, but your book taught me so much more. That's what we're in business to do. And on that note, um, we have all the Killing books in the BillOReilly.com Christmas store. All of them, all 13. You can get them. You can give them for gifts. You can keep them in your own library. And if you do that, you get a copy of my live show that I did last Friday on Long Island. Only you get it. We have a seven-minute clip posted for concierge and premium members, so you get a little taste of the show. And that is a really good deal. Word of the day, no vexation, V-E-X-A-T-I-O-N. When writing to me, Bill at BillOReilly.com, Bill at BillOReilly.com, all together now. Name and town, if you wish to opine. Back with the final thought in a moment. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. 
Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money, your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 866-501-5201. That's 866-501-5201. Or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201. Or text Bill to 65532. Here is the final thought of the day. Number one, I want you to relax this weekend. It's a very intense news cycle. It's a lot of bad things. I'm not even going to watch. I have to check in, but I'm not watching uh, news this weekend. I'm going to go out, distill some leaves changing here on Long Island. I get a little apple cider, uh, zip around. I'm going to have lunch with old friends. I'm going to be outside a lot. Even though it's a little chilly, it's okay. All right? I'm going to de-intensify it's because you can get overwhelmed by this news cycle. It's too intense, too much death and destruction, too many bad politicians, you know, too much dishonesty and corruption. It's just overwhelming. So my solution to that is I get out to nature, say some walks, a little contemplation. I'm going to have a really good column on Hunter Biden on Sunday at noon. Look for that. Um, but I'm getting away from it, all right? So I got the uh, Giants, New York Giants, tragic. Sunday, late game, and then the Jets, tragic. <laughs> Monday night, so we'll watch them. But I'm pretty much just going to be a nature guy this weekend, and um, I suggest you might want to follow my lead. Thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.